Hi, I'm Kira, an OpenSciad teacher and facilitator. In this video, I'll be walking you through the key moments of Lesson 2 of the Light and Matter Unit. We're also going to take a look at some tips and tricks for helping make the most of this lesson. I think this is a really affirming lesson for students because we immediately see some of the questions and ideas for investigations that were developed in Lesson 1 being utilized to guide our learning in Lesson 2. It's a really fun lesson, so let's get started. So in lesson one, we observed a music student and his teacher seeing different things when looking through the same material. Um, so we noticed and learned that some materials can be reflective and see through at the same time. And we think that this might have to do with um, the location of a light source in relation to that material. So students ended the lesson wondering what would happen if we changed the light in our room system. So at a glance, this lesson takes about two and a half days to complete, and prepping the materials for this lesson should take about 45 minutes. There are a few optional activities for building prerequisite knowledge that you could utilize. That might bump your two and a half days to closer to three, and it may also increase your materials prep. So just be prepared um, and make a plan for that. Um, there are, this is also an investigation lesson and there are no videos or devices required. Um, there are a few key moments where big ideas surface in this lesson. Three of those are occurring on day one. So we're gonna start out lesson one by reminding students about our self-documentation collection, uh, remind students that we would like to collect those soon. And then we're going to motivate taking this one-way mirror uh, material out of the box so that we can make observations about it. So we do that, we take that material out, we mo notice and wonder about it. Um, we're observing what happens when we look at it on both sides and with different lights. Um, and then we're going to put it back in the box and we're going to swap the light from room A to room B and see what happens when we switch those, uh, those light sources around. Um, and then we will identify questions about light that we can investigate in the classroom using those um, driving questions and ideas for investigation from day one, or sorry, lesson one. Um, and then we will start testing different lighting scenarios in the box model. So um, that is how we will end day one. And on day two, we're going to collect our home learning assignment and then move on to making sense of the testing of light that we did on day one. And then um, students will develop a model um, or diagram of what they're seeing and what they think is happening. And so then we'll have a gallery walk that we will share our ideas. Um, and then we will have a building understandings discussion. So back into that scientist circle and deciding what we agree on about the role of light in our phenomenon. On day three, we're gonna introduce the progress tracker and add one to our notebooks. Um, and that's where we're gonna document these important ideas about our one-way phenomenon. We're gonna create a self-documentation collection. So this is where we'll share that stuff that students brought in um, in a central location. Um, and that can serve as kind of our related phenomena that's growing as we work. And then um, to navigate out of lesson two, we're gonna consider how this phenomenon might change if we swapped that one-way material for another material, like a, a, a glass window or a regular mirror. Okay, and what we figure out, this phenomenon seems to work because of the differences in light. Um, and on day two, we figure out that in order to see something, you have to have light. Um, we see objects when light bounces off of objects and into our eyes. We uh, also learn that depending on where light is, we can see objects differently, and we can represent the path that light travels in our models using arrows. And on day three, we realize that while our progress trackers might not be our favorite thing, they are a great way to keep track of our learning and how our ideas grow and develop throughout the unit. All right, let's dive into some of these key moments. So in part two, um, we motivate the need to look more at the light's role in our video phenomenon. So we're gonna take a closer look at the material that's positioned between the two boxes. And we'll notice that we can both see through the material and see a reflection off of it. But we also notice that the material looks the same on both sides when it's removed from the box. Uh, then we navigate into uh, swapping the lights. So when we use the box models in lesson one, a lot of students were tempted to move the light from room A to room B. So we try that in part three of today's lesson. 
When we do this, we see that the phenomenon we saw in lesson one is reversed, and that makes us wonder about other ways we can change the light in our box model and how those changes might affect what we're able to see. So we're going to collaboratively design an experiment using the questions we developed in our driving questions board in lesson one. Uh, student questions might be things like um, where the box, uh, where in the box the light is positioned, maybe even like what color the light was, um, the strength of the light, dim versus bright, among other things. Uh, we figure out that in order to see anything through the material, light has to be present. And we also notice that how well we can see the objects on either side of the material changes when we change the conditions of the light. So part nine is a huge learning opportunity. Students share their models in a scientist circle, and we notice that many students are using arrows or lines to represent what's seen in the phenomenon, but what the arrows represent might differ slightly. So some students may use the arrows to show what the person sees, uh, which we'll refer to as line of sight, and others might have used the arrows to show the direction and the path the light travels, uh, which is our path of light. So when we come to consensus, um, we are determining that the path of light is what we need to focus on since we're only able to see an object because the light leaves a light source and bounces off the object and then travels in a path to our eyes. So this is actually a reinforcement of the disciplinary core ideas that came from the fourth grade standards. So now that we have figured out more about light's role in our phenomenon, we want to know more about the material that interacts with it. So we wonder what would happen if we changed the one-way mirror material to glass or to a regular mirror. So in order to navigate us to this next lesson, we're going to brainstorm ways that we could investigate using different materials in our light boxes. So this is a pretty hefty lesson in terms of activities, discussions, and concepts, so I want to share some ideas that might help things run a little bit more smoothly in your classroom. Um, so first of all, you'll want to make sure that the boxes are set up in a way that allows them to easily view the changes they'll make to the light sources in the boxes. So for instance, make sure that there's holes in both, uh, both boxes at the top so they can swap the light out pretty easily without having to create those holes themselves. You'll also maybe want to provide some sticky notes or tape or note cards to cover holes so that we can just make sure that there's light coming in from one location in those boxes. Um, and since we're utilizing the questions students came up with in lesson one, you may want to pre-select some of those questions that reference changing of light from the driving questions board. If you notice uh, that there's a lack of questions about changing the light, you may want to like jot down some of the questions that you maybe overheard that didn't make it to the driving questions board um, on a sticky note and have students um, investigate those as well. Um, chances are students reference changing the light, so even if the questions weren't physically added to the driving questions board, someone said it. So you can add it as one of those ideas for investigation. Um, and in fact, as you listen to your students making sense of this phenomena, anytime students ask a question that might help guide us into a better understanding of the phenomenon, I would encourage them, maybe just hand them a sticky note and say, hey, can you jot down that question? That's a really good one. Can you jot it down and add it to our driving questions board? And just kind of get into the habit of that because they're going to wonder lots of stuff that's not on the driving questions board. Also in this lesson, it's important to give students time to explore before expecting them to write anything. Um, so I like to set a timer for a few minutes of exploration, like switching out the lights to different locations, dimming them, things like that. Um, and then when that timer goes off, I'll tell them that they have three or four minutes now to investigate and write down their observations. So you really want to encourage them to have that time of focused exploration. Okay, so if students are struggling to differentiate between line of sight and path of light, this is where you might wish to utilize the optional building prerequisite knowledge activities. Um, to strengthen their understanding. So these activities, uh, there's three of them. You can do one or all of them. It's totally up to you or none um, if your students are, are doing okay. So the first one is tracing the path of light with a flashlight. So you use like a flashlight, a laser, and some chalk dust or flour. You just toss the dust into the air and then you watch 
uh, they shine the light through it and you can kind of see that beam of light traveling through. Um, and that should reinforce the idea that light travels in a straight path. There is also an activity about conditions for light. So you'll select an object in a room that maybe some students can see better than others, like maybe like a pencil on a student's desk. Um, you'll discuss and model like vantage point and path of light and how light doesn't bend around an object to make it visible. Um, and then you're going to, uh, there's another activity that I actually like to use if I'm uh, short on assignments in my grade book or as like bell ringers and that is representing the path of light in different scenarios. So there's like um, chances to diagram uh, the path of light from the source bouncing off an object into the eyes. Um, so it's important uh, that students are understanding the difference between line of sight and path of light um, and really focus on that path of light scenario. Um, it's also important to spend some time going over the progress tracker. That's a routine that's utilized in most of the lessons in Open Sciad. So not only is it a great way to capture how our ideas grow and change, but it's also an excellent resource for students when they need to back up their claims with some evidence. Um, so they can utilize those progress trackers throughout the unit. The self-documentation collection um, is introduced at the end of lesson one. Um, but then is referred to throughout lesson two. Um, and it's tempting to skip it, <laughs> but this is a really great way for us to show students that our video phenomenon has a lot, a lot of similarities to things that we experience daily in our own lives. Um, so students can add photos or drawings throughout the unit when they see something that's related to our learning. Um, and so the, student, uh, the students add to it, but the teacher has to decide how they want students to collect and add their, their documentation. Um, so a lot of teachers will set up like a digital version using Google Slides or Docs. Um, some people use Padlet. Um, some teachers just print out the pictures or uh, uh, maybe add drawings to a physical document somewhere in the classroom. Um, but they're uh, they're able to add to this throughout the unit. There are some times when it's explicitly called out within the unit, but students can add to this at any point in the unit. Okay, and we are reinforcing um, the vocabulary of the light source. And this is reinforced from, uh, this is something that they talked about in first grade and in fourth grade and in lesson one and in the beginning of lesson two. So we're reinforcing those ideas from previous units. Um, however, there is no new vocabulary to add to our word wall. All right, and then poster management wise, we have, uh, we're going to refer back to our initial consensus model and our driving questions board. We are going to make our agreement and disagreement chart that is specific to this lesson. And then we're going to start creating the science ideas chart. And that is a living document that we will add to throughout the unit. We'll also look at our revised consensus model. And this time we're gonna make sure that we have those path of light arrows. And that is something that we will also refer to quite a bit um, in this unit. Okay. I've walked you through lesson two. I hope that this lesson goes well for you. I hope that your students are engaged and excited about their own ideas, guiding their learning. And I'm looking forward to going over lesson three with you in the future.